Kill Bill and Troy. Name an artist, he's worked with them. Madonna, Beck and Elton John have all requested Evan and his magic strings. So when Lincoln Park needed a string section for Meteora, they called Evan. So they called me, they asked me if I was available and I said absolutely. I've always, you know, I'm, I'm fond of rock fusion hip hop, particularly the hip hop. And uh, I, was, I was into it in a second, and so if I'm available from the Philharmonic, I am there. Well, as I recall, it was a two, three-hour sessions. And in each session, you do two to three tunes. We run it down to make sure that all the notes are right and they're in the right place. Then we'll record it, and we'll listen to see if, you know, there's, if we need to change balances, also whether the producer as well as the arranger want some want to just make you know tweak it a little here bring out a line here maybe add a little bit of a, a, a rhythmic thing and that's basically how it goes on for the the entire two three hour sessions it's a great working situation it's always positive and upbeat and that is no lie I wouldn't I wouldn't say that about the Philharmonic but about a session like Lincoln Park, it was completely upbeat. We were, we were very into it. Lincoln Park's use of an orchestra and their music really helps epitomize how they try to be different. I, I think that their standard is high, first of all. So they want the best. Now, not all classical musicians, and please, this is not a, an immodest comment, but not all classical musicians can switch to that other kind of thing. I mean. You're, you're talking to a guy whose favorite group is Earth, Wind & Fire. So, you know, I, you got to have a groove. The thing that's interesting, though, is a lot of bands will try to do that, and they do it so unsuccessfully. It just sounds awful. It sounds contrived. And it's to a certain extent, I think, when a lot of bands do it, it almost sounds like they're trying to be, you know, like they're doing it to try to be cool or to show that they have culture. And Linkin Park is certainly not doing that. When Linkin Park chose to have string players. It only enhances their unusual sound. Oh, they dug it. It was, it was a great session. There's no comparison with the real sound and the sampling, no matter how good the sampling is. I mean, the resonance, they can't get that live quality, that live, like for, since I'm a violist, that amber, um, deep baritone quality of sound. And uh, particularly when you're in a group where you have people using instruments like mine. And I think one of the ways where their use of, say, an orchestra or of classical musicianship really comes through is in knowing the limit, the amount that's in a particular song. As first seat of the Philharmonic, they give me an instrument, which is a 500-year-old Perugino di Zanetto. It's 200 years older than Stradivarius. It is one of the great instruments of the world. And Many times during uh, studio calls, they have literally had to adjust the mic just to turn down my instrument because it is such a cannon. Typically, when where bands make mistakes, when they bring in, you know, unique outside artists and, and say classical musicians, is they overdo it. They take it over the top. When you get 12 people together with fine instruments, they resonate off one another, and it creates this incredible, it's like a symphonic sound which you just can't get electronically. Brad comes in, and, and I, think, I think Chester was there, and he says what he wants to do was he wants to like do this mock, this like little acting thing where he comes in and he says, uh, he says, you know, I don't know what the hell's going on, but you guys suck, it sounds like, sh sounds like shit. And so we had chosen one particularly feisty cellist who was gonna stand up and res respond to him. So Larry stands up and he says, we don't know what the hell you're talking about and, and why don't you go bugger off? I'm using the right vernacular, right? And so it was like, the, the tension, it was good. So and then we all had a good laugh about it, but it was, they, they had a very, it was a, a unique sense of humor. It would be easy to just sit at home on a computer and knock out something which would you know, probably pass perfectly well as being an, an orchestra. Lincoln Park knew it was very, very good in picking the exact moments.
to where to have these bands come in and that's what makes it stand out. What made the session special was that the the guys were so um, accessible. You know, you do record with some artists who are divas and have attitudes and these guys came in and they were, you know, joking around with us and when when we played something and they were really into it, they would come running out after the take was over and they'd say, yes, that is, you know, and, and that's just a great feeling because you want to give them what they want. I think it's, it's rather impressive that Linkin Park chose to use actual bodies at a time when, let's face it, you know, drum machines are very popular. I mean, you literally could have somebody listen to a song and not even fully put together that the orchestra's on there because they did it with such subtle textures. I remember after that session that I called my wife and said, oh my God, I just recorded with this group at Lincoln Park and it was such a, ha you know, a happening session and it was a great feeling. I had uh, some other clients who I had worked with who knew the cats in Lincoln Park and they said you should go over and talk to Noel at West Philly Music. System of a Down, Limp Biscuit, and The Grateful Dead are but a few bands whom Noel Gould has worked alongside. Noel designs Pro Tools music editing software at West LA Music and counts Linkin Park among his happy customers. Joe was really, really anxious to get a Pro Tools system and uh, I kind of got him on the phone and, uh, and talked to him for a little bit and they said, yeah, okay, no problem, I can design this for you, I can get you guys taken care of, when do you want to do it? They're like, today. I was like, really? Okay, well come on down to the store and uh, you know, we'll sit down and we'll figure out everything that you need. Well see, everything that they do is for use with the band in one way or another. This was for his studio at home so that he could do his own personal work and all that kind of stuff, but these guys are really focused and everything that they do is sort of a function of what the band is going to do as a whole. So they use systems at home, they use systems on the bus, they use systems all over the place because they're constantly working. Personally, I, mean, I work with Joe Hahn here in the store, I work with Brad Delson here in the store. Uh, those are the only two cats from Lincoln Park who have actually made it into the store. But I work with their management very closely and I work with other members of the band over the phone. I've designed about uh, seven or eight different rigs for Lincoln Park. Uh, five of them just for the bus alone. And so you've got a situation here where I, I, I did a rig, a, a, a smaller rig for Brad Delson for his house. And I did a pretty big rig for Joe Hahn for his house. And uh, actually did a rig for Rob Burden for his house. And then did a bunch of rigs for the bus. So that these guys go, they do a show, they get on the bus. And as they're driving around from, from venue to venue, they're on the bus composing. They're on the bus working. So the, the systems on the bus are portable systems. They're smaller systems. They don't have as many input and output requirements and things of that nature because they can work on the Pro Tools rigs and do the, the different kind of sampling and things like that that they need in a smaller environment. Uh, they still got lots of plugins. They still got lots of effects and those kinds of things. The systems at home are more elaborate and they're more expandable and they tend to have more controllers with faders that they can move and this kind of thing. As a music journalist, what I hear in Lincoln Park is a desire to take a popular format and really make it their own. To be able to be unique, to be able to be different. If you mix the classical with the hip hop, you're only going to get classical people to say, whoa, there's strings in that. I didn't realize that. If there's one thing that stands out, I think it's really their perfectionism. You know, really an obsession with making every detail perfect. And they